Hey, Psych2Goers. Are you constantly overworking yourself until you are exhausted? Burnout is typically characterized as physical, emotional, and mental exhaustion. Loss of drive and motivation, an inability to concentrate at work or school, feeling apathetic or lacking in emotion, and a decline in productivity. These symptoms can even lead to depression and anxiety disorders when not addressed. So to help you become more aware of whether you're overworking yourself or not, here are seven toxic habits that lead to burnout. Number one, not taking or enjoying breaks. Do you find yourself constantly buried in your work? While you may think that overworking yourself means that you're being more productive, you may actually be depleting your own productivity. A study by the interview guys showed that people who skipped lunch had a burnout score of 73%, and those who ate lunch at their desks had a burnout score of 54%. Even minor breaks like taking a brief walk throughout the day Eating a healthy snack or even a quick meditation session can lessen your stress levels and decrease your levels of burnout. It's good to remember that when you don't use your off switch, you stand a higher chance of having burnout. Number two, perfectionism. Have you set really high standards for yourself? Perhaps you're a high achiever whose ambition won't let you settle for a second best. Or maybe you tend to work twice as hard as everyone around you to appear perfect. This type of thinking and habit can end up trapping you in a vicious cycle of always needing to maintain an image of perfection forever. But by always trying to look good, you may only end up exhausting yourself to the point of burnout. Number three, not saying no or advocating for yourself. Do you find yourself agreeing to a lot of things? By always saying yes, you may commit yourself to an overwhelming and endless to-do list. Nobody is obligated to stand up and speak up for you, which is why it's important to learn how to advocate for yourself. If you don't speak up about an issue or mistreatment towards you or try to negotiate better terms for yourself, your initial anger may only morph into resentment and hopelessness. While it might not always end up in your favor, it's always important to stand up for what is best for you. Number four, poor sleep. How much sleep do you get? As adults and young adults, it's recommended that you get seven to nine hours of sleep. If you already have a sleep cycle that helps you and that you agree with, then you don't need to change anything. Despite what many people think, pulling all-nighters does not help with your long-term performance. Your brain needs time to properly retain what you've learned and consolidate what you've been through during the day. And sleep is necessary. It's a necessary tool to do that. After all, you don't wanna be performing at less than half a battery of power at school or work. Number five, poor time management and procrastination. Did you end up doing the things you said you'd do yesterday or last week? It's normal to procrastinate on things once in a while. However, it may become a problem if it becomes a lifestyle. You may end up only heightening your stress levels and overwhelming yourself when you constantly put off tasks and projects. So if you struggle with time management and procrastination, it may help to do some research on how you can avoid putting off things and how to better use your time so that you can work, play, and relax. In the end, good time management can help you create a better balance in your life. Six, not exercising or going outside. Besides increasing your serotonin and dopamine levels, boosting your metabolism, and strengthening your immune system, <laughs> exercise can also reduce your stress and hypertension levels. It's recommended to exercise three times a week for about 30 minutes. Even taking a short walk when you've been sitting all day can help to provide more circulation to your legs and prevent blood clots from occurring. According to a study by Ewart and Chang, being in nature has the added bonus of reducing psychological stress levels. You don't even need to be outside for long. Just 15 minutes can do the trick. Number seven, failure to perform self-care routines. Do you push yourself to keep working even when you're feeling fatigued and are lacking the motivation to? When you don't acknowledge the stress in your life or counter it with self-care routines, you increase your burnout levels. It's vitally important to have a balanced life. This means getting enough sleep and exercise and having a healthy diet and good coping mechanisms for stress. So never forget about days off and holidays. If you have paid time off, it benefits you to take it. Do activities that you enjoy and that soothes and relaxes you. And number eight, 
not asking for help. Are you afraid to reach out for help? Whether it's because you're afraid of rejection or scared you'd be imposing on your fellow colleagues, supervisors, or professors, it may be difficult for you to ask for help when you need it. But the truth is, it's hard and impossible to shoulder everything on your own. So when you need guidance or clarity on something, remember that it's not weakness to ask for help when you need it. Help is a necessity. Are you experiencing burnout? Let us know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with those who might benefit from it. And don't forget to hit the notification bell icon to get notified whenever Psych2Go posts a new video. The references and studies used in this video are added in the description below. Thanks for watching and see you in our next video.